Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. If you're a believer in a Mayan prophecy that the world is ending in 2012, prepare to be debunked. You're going to be debunked by our favorite uh, astronaut and murderer. Good job, kid. Thank you, thank you. He is actually the only astrophysicist that we know that will talk to us. Jamie Matthews is joining us now. How are you? Hi, Jamie. Very nice good. to see you. So first yeah. and foremost, uh, we talked about this <laughs> First and foremost, credibility <laughs> off the charts, man. The credibility is off the charts. When chart. I know well, the, the world's future is so bright, end, you got to wear shades. I turn to you. Uh, last year, we talked about everybody's astrology signs changing mm -hmm. because of something happening up in the sky. Say that again. Am, last year? Am I still mm -hmm. a Taurus? Uh, no, no, you're, you were what you were last year, which I can't remember now. I was a Taurus. <laughs> yeah, but were you a Taurus? So oh, I but am what, what I am. But, but what, you were, what were you told that you were when... See, she can't remember either. Remember. Yeah. But what I love about the this is... The thing is, is, is you're, whatever sign that you read in the newspaper, whatever sign wrong. you were told you were, you're actually the sign before that. Oh, because right. when, you know, when astrology was created by the Babylonians 3,000 years ago, uh, the sun would be in different positions in the sky relative to the stars. And so on your birth date 3,000 years ago, where the sun was is what determines your birth sign, but where it was where you were born is actually a different constellation. So, Jamie, uh, that all sounds wonderful, but it really doesn't matter because the world's coming to an end in 2012. There are birds falling out of the sky. Right. There's fish washing up dead. <laughs> so we may as well cash it all in, right? Yeah, yeah I should actually be laughing at that. No? <laughs> <laughs> birds falling. <laughs> it's raining cats and dogs. Yeah, well, so I, I'm an astrophysicist, not an ornithologist, but as a scientist, I can do a little research into the stories that you know the news reports of flocks of birds falling from the sky and and fish and so on and uh, which some people have have claimed is an omen for the forthcoming apocalypse in yes. 2012 uh, but as it turns out uh, it, it happens naturally for for example I, I did some research there was a uh, flocks of birds blackbirds in Arkansas starlings in South Dakota the starlings in South Dakota, turns out the U.S. Department of Agriculture poisoned them. Oh. Some, some farmer complained oh. and, they, and they were culling the, uh, the flocks. <laughs> uh, the ones in Arkansas do, over New Year's Eve apparently were disoriented and frightened by the New Year's Eve fireworks flew and basically into flew into yeah, yeah. trees, into buildings. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you have high altitude hailstorms that basically just uh, kill uh, flocks of birds and they fall. It turns out the U.S. Geological Survey, who knows why they're keeping track of birds birds, but it uh, turns out in the last 30 years there have been 16 instances of more than a thousand birds in a flock falling so from the happens. sky at once. So it none just, of this is happens. a sign of the impending nope. uh, Mayan prophecy of the world's nope. doom in 2020. You know what the, my favorite one is in a kind of morbid way is there was a, a, an incident of this in Romania re very recently. Turns out that the flock of birds had somehow gotten to a winery, and they and they ate the the murk, uh, yeah. which is so they were the grapes. Yeah, 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 they got hammered. They basically mash. died of drunkenness and alcohol poisoning. Oh. Uh, it's kind of morbidly funny. So let's go back <laughs> to the moved. Mayan oh, calendar, wow. which yes. is uh, said to end in 2012, and we are let's get thinking debunking. that is the apocalypse, and the world is actually going to end then. So what is the story? So let's talk about a brief history of the end of time, Mayan <laughs> revised edition. Yeah. Hey, there are time. books out there, there are people out there that would like you to believe that the world is going to end in 2012 and that the Mayans, thousands of years ago, predicted it. Uh, well, the Mayans were very, very careful observers of the night sky. They had to be. Every ancient civilization had to be because the sky was their calendar, the sky was their clock. And so if you wanted to know when to start uh, you know, harvesting the crops, crops yeah, and so mm -hmm. on, you needed to do this. You survived. And here is you know, one of the famous Mayan observatories Chichen in Chichen Itza, in the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, I say observatory, laser, uh, observatory, <laughs> because there were no telescopes at that time. What they were using these buildings for is to check alignments of the sun, the moon, the stars, and the wandering stars that we now know to be planets. Okay. And so they would look up and, for example, here's one of the most simple simple examples of the celestial clockwork. As mm -hmm. the Earth spins, everything seems to revolve around us. That uh, used to be the geocentric theory of the universe. It's now called the Toronto-centric theory of the universe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and <laughs> if you leave a camera shutter open for several hours, you'll see the That's stars good, yeah. leaving these trails. It's like a big uh, vinyl turntable overhead. That's the simplest of them. Uh, and so in the terms of a clock, if you look at a, a standard clock, there's three hands, and they'll all point in the same direction every 12 hours. Right. Except in the sky, it's like a clock 
that has thousands of hands and many of them moving very slowly and it takes a long time for a lot of them to line up. And even the very first simple mechanical clocks uh, like the, this one which you'd find in Prague in the Old Town Square were very complicated yeah, to no even kidding. register a few of those cycles. And here is the Mayan version Whoa, of the calendar. that and simplified everything. <laughs> image a lot uh, yeah. of times, you know, yeah. on, on coins, on yeah. necklaces, on jewelry, yeah. but what actually is it? Well, so what, what they were doing was just keeping track of all the different hands of that cosmic clock overhead and what they recognized the longest cycle that they could see lasted 5126 years and they called it the long count wow. and the very first long count ends in our calendar on December 21st 2012 that's the day we die well and the, the thing is is although the calendar doesn't stop there you don't find any examples of Mayan calendars that go past that and so that's why people suggest that hey the Mayans were saying that time was going to end on December 21st 2012 so, so what? they just is the calendar just done well think about it from another way say you want to make a calendar today say I want to make a calendar today so here I am sitting in my office <laughs> and I decide I need a calendar it's a great office <laughs> thank you it's a tourist attraction at UBC <laughs> Uh, free admission though and so all I have to do is I take a, a program software and I generate a calendar file I send the file to a laser printer and voila I have a calendar 10 minutes tops yeah. right. it's not rocket so science. what did the Mayans do well the Mayans go back to 400 BC that's uh, when we find the earliest records of a Mayan solar calendar so here's a Mayan who's saying lady needs I a need a calendar <laughs> well step one you need to find a rock a big rock. Oh, this is how big the rock would need to be if you wanted to start to make a calendar. So is this for the long count calendar? This is for the uh, the calendars that we find now from the Mayans. Step two rock. is you start carving your calendar into that rock. <laughs> step three, chip and repeat. It's kind of so like a shampoo take bottle. Ten it's take and how long? Step four to four hundred million and repeat mm -hmm. and repeat. So yeah, not ten minutes, probably not even ten weeks. I would guess maybe ten months. And here is wow. a real Mayan calendar. Four meters across weighing 20 tons so wow. think about it why would you ever make a calendar that starts after the first long count thousands of years after you and everybody you know and love has been long dead and buried well, you know, when it takes yeah. this much effort to make a yeah. calendar, Why I can do it? it. I can make it on a laser printer and make yeah. a calendar that starts Jamie, in 7,000 AD. I'm too lazy AD. to even make one on a laser <laughs> printer. I go buy them. <laughs> so the end of the first Mayan long count doesn't mean the end of time. It doesn't mean the end of life on Earth. Uh, hey. What it means, actually, to the Mayans is it would be the excuse for the most super humongous New Year's Eve party of all time. That's so the way they would look at it. Yeah, love it. exactly. It's it. You know, for example, we humans love this sort of thing. If uh, if all the numbers on the odometer of your car roll over to zero once, it's that's a huge roll. Exactly. Awesome. But the car so, doesn't die. So 2012 <laughs> isn't a reason to panic. It's a reason to party. Well debunked. <laughs> So, ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. we are not going to die in 2012. The calendar just yeah, wasn't big enough. Still not convinced. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, thank you so much. And if you want to hear uh, Jamie Matthews speak in person, you can go to a great event that's happening Wednesday, February 2nd, 7 o'clock at the Cottage Bistro. Bunch of great speakers. Yeah. It, uh, it is called The Flame. Real yeah, people, it's real stories. Real people, real stories. I've heard great things about this. People just get up and they tell their favorite story, and uh, there's some great ones that come out of it. So, Jamie, I'm going to show thank up you. and listen to yours. It'll be good. Thanks, man. <laughs> appreciate your time. Thank you both. Once again, <laughs> credibility. Right there. Uh -huh. Future We're is gonna take right. A break. <laughs>